Well, hello, welcome to Christ Lutheran Church, Visalia, California. I am Brian Mallison, pastor of this congregation. Our worship theme uh, for this month has been the long run. Today we bring it to a close, and our theme for this specifically is finishing well. I'm so glad that you have chosen to join us in worship. What we are doing in these days of the pandemic is to offer worship the best way we know how. Joining together, though remaining at a distance, allowing for us to connect with God and, well, and to come together as a people of God. We know that this is a hard time for everybody, but we hope that by virtue of online worship, that you are hearing the Word of God and allowing for the Holy Spirit to be active in your life. And so, let us finish well. Welcome. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hello, I'm Vicar Havala Forgi, and it is my great joy to welcome you to worship this morning. As Christians in the Lutheran tradition, we believe that confessing our sins as individuals and as a community really is active participation in the restoration of all creation. And so we come to our restoring and forgiving God with our weaknesses, our failures, our sinfulness, our selfishness, and we ask forgiveness, we ask for mercy, we ask for restoration. Please join with me in prayer. God of mercy, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have accepted ideas and statements about you that we know to be false in order to ease our paths. We have listened to those who would draw us away from you and away from loving our neighbor. We have avoided truth when it causes us discomfort. We have created myths that support our idols rather than truly worshiping you. God, by your grace and mercy, create in us seriousness in our worship of you in every moment of our lives. Forgive us for the ways that we have failed to love you and failed to love our neighbor. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may take joy in doing your will and walk in your footsteps, creating lives that glorify you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I am forever grateful for the grace that I have received. And so, as a fellow receiver of that grace, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
This is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 8. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Well, a little over a week ago, on Saturday, July 18th, Tanya Sperling suddenly passed away. Now, if you have been around Christ Lutheran Church for any period of time, you know Tanya. She loved her church, and she would show that by, well, attending all three worship services on Sunday morning, attending every Bible study that there is, be present at every potluck that we would offer, and she would come early, and she would freely share her stories and her love to anyone who was willing to listen and to receive. Tanya never held a leadership position, never served on our worship team, never taught a Sunday school class, never led a ministry. But nonetheless, Tanya was a deeply important part of Christ Lutheran Church, sharing our ministry and embodying the spirit of our mission. I've invited some folks to share their experiences of Tanya this morning. Please enjoy. Hi, I'm Pam Merkel, and I had the privilege of knowing Tanya here at Christ Lutheran Church. I'm not sure how many years it's been, but she was a fixture at eight o'clock service, which I go to. And at Well Women, I had the honor to pick her up and take her home quite a few sessions. And you know, Tanya was stronger than she looked. And she was an incredible prayer warrior. She was, would always ask, how can I pray for you? She, uh, in, 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 yes, she had her shortcomings or her limitations, I should say, but she never let those limitations limit her faith which I admired incredibly. We'll miss her, I'll miss her. Hi, my name is Janice Helgeson and I'm a member of Christ Lutheran Church and have been a friend of Tanya Sperling's for the last couple of years. I've known her and been aware of her in the church family, but uh, became very close with her when we started our Daniel Plan program in January of 2018 and then the bond or the relationship just became a lot closer when she reached out to me in January of 2019 for some personal assistance. She was in between caregivers and because one day in church, uh, I walked up and, and she just felt that she could have a trust with me. So that's basically when our, our real bond started and for 2019 and, and for the remainder of her life that, that ended this past Saturday, um, it's been just an em enjoyable time to be around her. Uh, we probably kept very close contact. She had suffered an injury in February of 2019, which presented some challenges. But uh, Tanya was an interesting woman, uh, very strong-willed, very determined, and that basically was because she had a tremendous faith in God and trusted the Lord and he was her, I mean, he led her through all of her life. She celebrated 70 years on the July the 4th and um, she listened to God and, and he made decisions, helped her make decisions that were tremendous and just an awesome thing in her life. And she loved the Lord and she loved sharing that with everybody that she knew. She wasn't afraid to, to say that. So strong, willed, determined, um, very social, 
loved the church family. She was involved in so many organizations. I just knew her through the Daniel Plan, which was a small group that we had, uh, but she was involved with recovery programs, the, the prison ministry. Uh, she loved any kind of small group. In fact, with this COVID, that was one of the downsides to her. She says, these four walls are driving me crazy. But um, it was just a, a real pleasure to know Tanya, to have her share her faith story with me, uh, to always say, what can I pray for today? And if she had somebody that she wanted me to pray for, she would send me a text and say, pray for so-and-so, this is what they're going through. Uh, she was just um, a delight to be around. And um, we had talks and with her passing, I'm sure she, uh, she was ready. She was at peace with her position. Again, made the, uh, she had lived independently for over 31 years. That was a huge accomplishment. And just having made the 70 years old because she was told that, or her parents were told at 18 months that she would never walk or talk. Um, so she's major accomplishments in her life. And um, I just can't say enough about her and my experience that I've had with her in the last couple of years. Hi, I'm Diane Aldrich, and I think we all have favorite Bible story characters, right? Well, Tanya could have been one of them. She was definitely a character. She was an enthusiastic evangelist, sharing her story of faith with many people, and even as she rode the city bus around town. She was uh, an encourager, often giving Pastor Brian a thumbs up while he was giving high points of his sermon and she had courage. She would bravely stand up for herself and others being made fun of or put down. And her dad, knowing that she would probably face many challenges in her life, well, he uh, instilled in her early the need for her to take care of herself. And she did that with strength and determination, never giving up and never feeling sorry for herself. Tanya absolutely enjoyed and loved celebrating her birthday with the United States of America. She loved being involved, but mostly she loved her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tanya was definitely a character, but she was one that the world and I needed. Hi everybody, my name is Noel Thompson. And I'm Lynn Forky. At least that's what Tanya thought about us every week. One of the great things about Tanya was that each Sunday morning, the first person at church is always Brian, and then I was kind of close behind, but Tanya was always the third person. And she would come in and she would sit in the sanctuary sometimes seven o'clock in the morning, and she would say to me, hey, Noel, and I would kind of stop on my tracks and I would say, hi, Tanya, it's so good to see you. And then I would say, but you remember, my name is Lim, I'm Lim, it's easy to remember. Lim, looks good, Noel, mm. And she would laugh and say, that's a good one, Noel. And every time I came to the church, she would always say, good morning, Pastor. And of course, me knowing, well, the truth, I said, good morning, Tanya. <laughs> I never corrected her. And if you were a parent, every time that she saw your kids, her face just lit up with joy. And every child that she saw, she said hi to and said, how are you? And she made sure that every child was welcome and loved here on campus. Tanya, we're going to miss you. That is so true. One of the things I'm really going to miss is, I don't know if you knew this, but Tanya went to at least two, sometimes three services a Sunday. And with that great childlike quality, every time Brian would unroll some little nugget of truth or something surprising or, or great in the sermon, she would shout, oh, wow. And uh, the crazy thing is, you know, he would say something like, and that person was Moses. And from the back you'd hear, oh, wow. Well, later on that same day at 11 o'clock, when she was back and hearing the same sermon, he would say, and that person was, and then she would jump in and say, Moses, oh, wow. And I'm really gonna miss that. She was engaged and she was happy and she filled, <laughs> she filled our lives with joy. Tanya, Mr. Noel here, he's gonna miss you a lot. And handsome Lim, we're gonna miss you. <laughs> God bless. Some pretty cool remembrances of a pretty cool lady. And that was fun. We've seen this before, right? After leading the Indianapolis 500 for 199 laps, 
In the final lap down the home stretch, car runs out of gas. Or after leading the Masters for three days and 71 holes, the talented young golfer lets his adrenaline get the best of him, and he duck hooks his drive out of bounds on the final hole. Or it's two outs, bottom of the ninth. The pitcher has a no-hitter going, and he's facing the number nine batter, who has a batting average less than 200, and the pitcher lazily hangs a curveball over the plate and gives up a bloop single. Okay, for some of you non-sports fans, the hare tears out in front of the turtle in a head-to-head -head competition, confident to easily defeat his slow-footed competitor. So he slows down, takes it easy, even takes a nap, only to have the turtle pass him at the finish line. What's the point? Well, it's about finishing well. Whether you're a, a college senior in your final year of school, whatever that's going to look like this year, or a woodworker finishing up a huge project, or an employee nearing retirement, or an author putting the final touches on a book, or a couple celebrating their 50th anniversary, we want to finish what we've started and we want it to be good. How you finish says something about what you stand for. There's an old preacher's story of a construction worker who for 40 years built homes for a contractor and he's nearing his retirement. He's tired of his work, but he's got one last house to build. But his heart's not in it. He uses low-grade lumber. He doesn't worry much about leveling and measuring. He scrimps on the hardware and the house is poorly built. And when it's done, the builder was surprised when the contractor thanked him for 40 years of service and handed him the keys to the house that he just built. So there's a life lesson in all of that for us. Maybe it's moral encouragement or simply a work, work ethic axiom. We need to finish well what we've started. But I'd like to shift the focus toward the spiritual. Jesus, on one occasion, had some guy who wanted to follow him. Stories recorded in the ninth chapter of St. Luke. Now, following Jesus would have been thought of as a pretty cool thing to do. I mean, he's healed scores of people. He's preached amazing sermons. He even told a storm to stop, and it did. I mean, who does this sort of stuff? Of course you want to follow Jesus. There's never been anyone like him. But Jesus throws up a roadblock. He says, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Whoa, those are some pretty strong words. I know nothing of plowing, but I assume that if someone who plows keeps looking back, then the plow won't deliver nice straight cuts in the ground and the end result is um, a haphazard tilling of the soil. Why would a person look back? I used to think that maybe Jesus was saying that um, a looking back person is wanting to go back where they came from. But that doesn't make any sense. Someone who's plowing isn't thinking, you know, I wish I could go back and replow that really nice sandy soil. Now, that was fun plowing. I don't think a plower would say that. I think someone who is plowing and who is tempted to look back is someone who wants to look at all the great plowing they have done before they're done. It's like a marathoner who runs 26.1 miles and decides to run the last one-tenth of a mile backwards in order to celebrate his or her accomplishments. Try running a tenth of a mile backwards. See where you end up, if not on your rear end. And I think Jesus is telling this would-be follower, okay, but no looking back. No stopping until you get to the end, because you've got to finish well. So this life we live and this faith in God we hold while we live life is a long run. Now, this has been said in one way or another over these past 
three weeks, but it bears repeating. There's nothing easy about life in, faith, life in general and faith in particular. There are trials and temptations and challenges and setbacks and, and failures along the way. But hopefully one, faith, will make the other, life, more possible and even more enjoyable. Now we are in our, what, 18th or 19th week of social distancing, of sheltering in place, of fearing a virus, of wrestling with economic uncertainties, of wondering, when is this all going to go away? I'm sure, like me, you thought when all of this started back in the middle of March, that by the middle of the summer, things would be better. But here we are, and they aren't. Businesses that uh, reopened are now closing again. Looks like schools are only going to be online. Hospitals are overwhelmed. And more and more people are getting sick and dying. B believe it or not, there are phone apps that you can get a hold of that give you running totals. I've got one of those. As of late this week, and time that I was preparing this message, there has been 15 and a half million people around the world who have been infected with COVID-19 and 633,000 who have died in the United States. Over 4 million have gotten sick and almost 150,000 have died. And in our state, California, over 400,000 have been infected and over 8,000 have died. And medical experts suggest that we haven't yet come to what's called the second wave. And it's tempting to look back over these 18 and 19 weeks and say, you know what? I've done a pretty good job of socially distancing and keeping safe. I think I can lighten up now and kind of do what I want to do from this point on. That would be to have a hand on the plow looking back and making a mess of everything to come. My sense, and it's based on my faith conviction of how best to love my neighbors, is that we need to finish this COVID-19 marathon well. Now, I have no idea where we are in this marathon. Maybe we are at uh, the 26.1 mile marker. Or maybe we're just halfway, but we have to finish well. And while there are a lot of challenges to what finishing well might mean for me as a pastor, one of the hardest is not to be able to adequately celebrate the lives of those who have finished their course here on earth and now rest in God's eternal embrace. We've lost some wonderful members like Tanya. And we haven't really been able to say goodbye to them. And I don't want to give you the wrong impression and say that, uh, that I love officiating at funerals. That makes me sound like I enjoy when our members die. I don't. But there is something so powerful about hearing life stories, of hearing of life accomplishments, of hearing about the power of relationships. But the best part for me is to hear how people have finished well because of their faith. There is something so powerful for me to celebrate a life that drew strength from a relationship with God, especially at the end of life. I think when Paul wrote this letter to his protege, Timothy, he was nearing the end. It appears from things he says elsewhere in the letter that um, he's in Rome, and he's in prison, and he knows that things are not going to end well. But he draws upon years of faith and living in a relationship with Jesus to say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And he awaits what athletes of his day would receive when finishing a competition, a laurel wreath. But for Paul, it's even better than that receiving a crown of righteousness. COVID-19 aside, 
If there is one message that I'm hoping that hits home this morning or whenever you're watching this, it's the encouragement to go the distance with God, to stay the course, so to speak, until your final breath. It seems that going the distance pays off the greatest in those final breaths. That um, is one of the gifts of pastoral ministry, to be able to be with folks in their final days and to see how a life of faith plowed the way for an acceptance, and even in some case, a joy-filled acceptance of what's coming toward the end of life. Now, I'm not saying that every person of faith is excited about leaving behind loved ones. That's never easy. But there is often a quiet confidence in knowing that one, the one who raised Jesus from the grave will be the one who opens up eternity where true life really begins. Early in my ministry at Christ Lutheran Church, I visited in the hospital one of um, our great saints. His name was Art. Art was a quiet man, but a steadfast, faithful man. He never said much to me. I remember him a couple of times I'm on his way out from worship, asking where I got the sermon that I preached that day. I, I guess he thought that we preachers got our sermons from a book or something. And I never knew if he asked this, thinking that the sermon was so good, it couldn't possibly have come from me, or if it was so bad, maybe I ought to discontinue copying from the source. <laughs> At any rate, Art was dying. His um, breathing was labored. He hadn't spoken in days. He was out of it. And as I stood at the foot of his bed with his family present, all of a sudden, Art opened his eyes. And he sat up. And he said, wow. And then he closed his eyes and he laid back down. And in the matter of some minutes later, he died. Wouldn't you love to have seen what Art saw? <laughs> oh, you will. But that's the stuff, I think, that is given as a gift to those who go the distance, who finish the race, who win the prize. But maybe even better is the gift given to any family member who ever has had to stand at the bedside of a dying, faithful loved one to witness the acceptance and the peace in those final moments of somebody who finished well. In no small way, when Jesus told the guy who wanted to follow him that he couldn't go forward with Jesus while looking back, I think Jesus is really talking about himself. The temptations to look back, to even stop plowing altogether, were with Jesus to the end. In the garden when he prayed, and on the cross when others mocked him, he could have said, you know, that's it. I'm done. No more. But he didn't. For your sake and mine, Jesus went the distance. He finished well. And then, do you know what he did? He promised that, that we would get whatever he won. It's sort of like an Olympic marathon winner receiving the gold medal and then handing it to an overweight non-athlete in the stands. We get the reward, the crown of righteousness that rightfully belongs to Jesus. Until that time, we press on. One foot in front of the next, one step at a time, we wake up in the morning with the plow on our hands and we look forward to the path that we will till that day. Oh, and at times we're going to get discouraged and there will be a times that we will want to quit. But, but we hear the heavenly call of our God who invites us to keep our eyes on the prize and our hopes in the one, the only one who will see us through. May the life that you are building reflect the values of the master builder who desires our lives to reflect his goodness. And may you be energized to run the long run. And may the day 
When it all draws to a close, find you saying as you gaze into eternity, wow. Amen. And I'm not sure I finished so well there. Well, you get another shot at it next week. of Jesus, God demonstrated commitment to love us and be present with us both in our times of distress and pain and in our moments of joy. And so we approach God in prayer, confident that we are heard, that we are loved, and that we are not alone. Please join with me in prayer. Gracious and almighty God, we are a community committed to proclaiming the gospel. And so, Lord, we pray for those who do not know you. As extended periods of uncertainty create longing for you in many that we encounter, give us courage to speak words that give comfort, demonstrate your love, and teach the good news of Jesus. God, we are a community committed to connection and so we pray that you would strengthen our bonds of love in you. We lift to you those who are isolated by illness, by quarantine, or by grief. We ask for healing for those who are fighting coronavirus and all other injury and illness of body, mind, and spirit. We ask for your comfort for those suffering in loneliness. And God, we ask for your hope to surround those who are journeying with grief. 
We are a community committed to supporting our neighbors. And so God, we pray for those who lead, sustain, and protect us. We ask for you to impart your wisdom on all leaders, those in government, those in education, those in your church, and those who are working to create change and bring justice. We ask for your strength for those who sustain us, those who grow and transport food, those who work to provide us with things we take for granted, electricity, clean water, avenues for transportation. And God, we ask for your protection upon those who take risks to protect us all, medical caregivers, first responders, law enforcement, military. And God, we ask particularly for your insight and creativity in those who are working to create a vaccine to protect the world. God, we are a community committed to peace, and we lift up to you a world in conflict. Bring understanding, renew patience, ease tensions, suppress violence, and create, we beg, peace in our homes, peace in our friendships, peace in our communities, peace in our country, and peace in our world. God, we are a community committed to loving and valuing all people, and so we pray for Christ Lutheran Church. As you led your people during the exile from Israel, show your hand in our exile from our familiar and beloved spaces. Renew our hearts for worship. Build your temple in us. Refresh our leaders and create hope in this community and in all who we touch. We pray these and all things unsaid in the name of Jesus Christ, our hope. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I stopped by Tanya's apartment and recorded her saying the Lord's Prayer. We thought that it would be fitting to have her lead us in praying this prayer one last time. Okay, anytime. Our Father in heaven. How thy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it in heaven. Give us up today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forget thee who sin against us. Stay up from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the king and the, the king and the power and the glory are yours now forever. Amen. Once again, welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. I want to uh, remind you of a couple of very important uh, announcements and then share with you some important information. First, uh, tonight, Sunday the 26th of July, will be our final call to prayer gathering for a while. We're gonna be taking the month of August off from this gathering simply because it's gotten too hot in the evenings. We're inviting our church to continue, however, to pray for the health and the hope and the peace of our church and of our community, of our nation and of our world. We will resume in September on September 6th. So watch for more information. And this coming week, there are two opportunities for you to be a part of the conversation surrounding the book, Dear Church. The book is a challenge for us, especially in light of the national struggles over race, equality, and justice. These gatherings are designed for those who have read the book. The first gathering is strictly a Zoom meeting. It's on Monday evening at seven o'clock. You can access the Zoom contact information through the weekly e-blast or call the church office. The second Dear Church conversation will be on Wednesday morning, the 29th at 10 a.m. This will be held here on the church campus, gathering in the plaza. We will set up chairs to ensure social distancing and attenders are required to wear a face mask. And then let me um, take this opportunity to highlight our church's financial situation. We had um, every concern going into the online worship experience and shutting down our church campus, that this would all have a detrimental effect upon the financial support of the congregation. 
but it hasn't. Our church has done an amazing job of supporting our ongoing ministry of the church over these past 18 weeks of dramatic change. We are right where we should be in regard to our financial obligations for the year. We have been able to keep, well, the majority of our staff in place. We have kept current on all of our monthly bills, including our mortgage. We have been able to fully support our ministry partners outside the church, such as, well, our missionaries in Africa and Thailand, such as our support of local ministries, such as My Father's House and the Rescue Mission, Visalia Emergency Aid, and Habitat for Humanity, such as our commitment to the ELCA World Hunger Program and the Lutheran World Relief, and such as our support of the Sierra Pacific Synod and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Usually, about this time of the year, hitting the halfway mark allows for our leadership to present um, our financial picture at the bagels with the board. In this, um, that we're not able to do that, if you would like to have a copy of our mid-year financial report, please contact Zara, Carol Zarn Salvador at the church office. She'd be happy to provide you this information. Thank you, church, for faithfully supporting and loving your congregation. We um, pray that you will continue to, to give. It is as important now as ever, especially as we go through these summer months, which usually are a very difficult time to go through. And as we continue to look to the future and asking, asking God to lead us appropriately, Please use the online giving options or continue to mail or drop by your envelopes to the church office. However the future unfolds, may God be active among us and within us to advance God's purpose through this church. Thank you. May you finish well. May you keep your eyes on the prize of God's eternal kingdom. May the tasks that lie before you be met with renewed passion and purpose. And may you be comforted by the presence of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>